Time flies, it's week four already. I'm Julian Keith and this is UOW Update. We've all seen the fun had at the recent garden party, but there's more to the story. There are student claims of overcrowding, overselling of tickets and safety concerns. We've spent some time trying to get to the bottom of it. Garden Party. It's one of the largest events on the university calendar. However, not everyone's night ended as well as it started. Not good. It was packed. Not happy, but money wasted. A number of students are left disappointed and calling for refunds after being unable to see one of the headline performers due to the Unibar reaching full capacity. Like, they closed off Unibar. The manager had closed it off because it was full capacity, so... Despite claims, Mike Gilmore, General Manager of Wollongong Uni Centre, says Garden Party did not oversell tickets. We sold pre-sale tickets of 1,700 tickets and we had just under 100 people buy tickets walking up to, walking up to the event. Unibar and Uni Hall, Garden Party as a total event, has a capacity of 2,460. Students have taken to the Uni Centre and Garden Party Facebook page to voice their frustrations. Concerns were also raised about the number of security present. However, Mr Gilmore says they had more than enough. The security plans that we had and the number of security staff that we had were balanced on having up to 2,000 people. Mr Gilmore says there will be a number of considerations when reviewing this year's event, including the coordination of acts. We'll have a look at and, and perhaps closely balance or perhaps better balance which act should perform in which venue. Courtney Howe, UOW TV. The coal seam gas debate continues to rage. There's split opinions everywhere you look, and it's not hard to find them on campus. What we need to do as a society is place um, stricter emphasis on the regulatory authorities to make sure that sites are adequately quantified, monitored, post and pre-mining activities. I, I would personally love to see a ban on coal seam gas. I, I, that's what government should do, it should be a legislation to, to ban the practice. I would love to see places prohibited like um, prime agricultural land or any agricultural land, um, any, any places where it's a water catchment area. The federal government has unveiled its Creative Australia policy. It's been welcomed by students and those facing the challenge of helping our grads get a job. You do this wonderful degree, but you're not sure how it's actually going to lead to a job. And you're sometimes you're so busy doing doing your degree and doing your passion that you don't actually think about the bigger picture about, you know, career and about how you're actually going to transition into a career. So I think it will provide increased opportunities, but I think students really still need to actually start thinking about their career and looking at um, how they can transition from uni into a, into a work career. Uh, the, the more money, the more creativity that will obviously develop from it because of the more areas that will be affected. Because um, arts, I think a lot of people focus on just like three main areas or something. Like, I think to, to put more money in it broadens the whole creative industry. On the subject of jobs, the Autumn Careers Fair brought job hunters and job providers together. It's always a good mix, as Michael Liu reports. Welcome to the annual Autumn Careers Fair at the University of Wollongong, where over 47 leading global and Australian employers come and make their dreams of diligent EOW students become a reality. Would you please introduce yourself to us, please? Yeah, morning, Michael. My name's uh, Lieutenant Ben Robinson. I'm a weapons electrical engineer in the Navy. And today we're out here at uh, Wollongong, obviously uh, providing information to the students about uh, different career opportunities uh, within the Defence Force. What we're looking for today, obviously, we're looking for uh, students um, who you know, show leadership potential you know, want to get out there, represent their country. So we provide career advice for students, all the way from helping them figure out what they want to do with their lives to actually accepting a job and everything in between. I'm Jackie and I work for the Department of Infrastructure and Transport. I went to University of Wollongong myself and went into the graduate program and I'm here to try to convince other people to do the same. We're a professional body which represents um, accountants around Australia and around the world and we also run events to try and connect students with employers, so networking events and things like that. TBH has a, 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 a culture in which um, the people are basically a family in there, okay? So we don't assess people not only on their grades, but their, 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 their ability to adapt with our existing um, personnel in the company. It's very important to decide what you're going to do later on, but at the same time, it's not as restricting as actually going out and choosing a career. It's just good to go and have a look at your options. 
It's great to like just see the big names that are out there and what's the different industries, who the big names are in each industry, and uh, just be able to approach them and uh, see which people are open to sponsorship and which aren't. UOW and Wollongong have rolled out the welcome mat to our international students. The Welcome to Wollongong event just gets bigger and better. Miigay Yalanga Yalanga. Welcome to country and welcome to land. Hi, we're at the Duck Pond Lawn for Welcome to Wollongong. It's a chance for international students and staff to get a taste of the Wollongong culture. What's your first impression of Wollongong? Uh, I think Wollongong is beautiful. The weather is pretty good. Friendly. Pretty good for surfing and stuff too. I can find anything here from all over the world, so it's nice. What are you looking forward to the most about your time here in Wollongong? Most the study because I'm studying in Wollongong University. The beach, of course. This is called Bawan, but in some other place in Indonesia it's also called Bala Bala. So it, uh, it was like typical vegetables fritter, you know that? Yeah, just taste it. And you can dip in the sauce. Ooh. It's sweet sauce and mm. this is spicy sauce. Mm. Right. Mm. It's good. I hope you enjoy your stay in Wollongong and more specifically your opportunity to study at the University of Wollongong. And finally, we marked the United Nations Declared Happiness Day last Wednesday and it's inspired this week's On The Spot. Our team has been out and about. Did they catch you? What would you like to see recognised as an international day? I'd like to see the International Day of Sex recognised. Uh, safe sex, though. I'd like to see an International Day of Christopher Walken impressions. Yeah. Mine's terrible, but you know, there are probably a lot of lot more excellent impressions out there, but I'd try my best. Yeah. I think there should be an International Day of Honesty where you can go up to someone who you've been pretending to like all year and just putting up with and tell them how much of a dick they are. Well, I'd like to see an International Day of Chocolate, unless you're lactose intolerant, in which case I'm really sorry for you. Definitely go for International Siesta Day, but in going away from the traditional siesta, it would last the entire day, not just 20 minutes in the middle of the afternoon, because that's just ridiculous and it's deprivation of sleep, cruelty to the living race, really. I'm glad you asked that question. I think that we need running as an international day. People need to stop sitting down. Get off your asses, people. Let's get moving. That's our update. I'm Julian Keith. Have a good week and a safe long weekend.